So in this last video, I want to talk about how our new understanding of ensembles as a description of subsystems of quantum system can give us a better picture of the quantum measurement process. And along the way, we're going to talk about a phenomenon known as decoherence, which plays an important role in this understanding. And so to start, let me just point out that the description that we had of, a, of an ensemble of quantum states kind of reminds us of our description of the state of a quantum system after a measurement. So in the standard, in the standard picture, the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, you could start with a state, say of a spin, which is in a superposition state of up and down. And then we say, if we now go and perform a measurement of the Z component of the spin for that system, then what's going to happen is that the wave function will collapse and we'll either end up with the, the spin in the up state with some probability one half, or we'll end up with a spin in the down state with probability one half. And so the description of our final outcome in terms of uh, for that spin, it is basically the same information um, that we would use to describe an ensemble. And so the, the punchline of this video is going to be that um, this, this whole idea of, of wave function collapse, <clears throat> um, this isn't something artificial that uh, we have to introduce as an extra thing in quantum mechanics. It turns out that just applying quantum mechanics and considering the evolution of not just the spin, but the spin and the detector and the environment of the detector, just the ordinary evolution of our quantum system using the Schrodinger equation um, gives us some final state um, where the state of the spin itself is in this ensemble up with probability one half and down with probability one half. Okay, we've understood that that is that is a possible state of a single spin in the context of a larger system. And so in this whole process of interacting with a measuring device um, and ending up with some uh, measurement outcome, um, there's not actually anything specific that happens that uh, we would call wave function collapse. There's just a natural process where the spin starts in a superposition state and it ends in an ensemble. So let's understand uh, in more detail how this works. And so the idea is that we want to consider not just our spin, but the spin and the detector and the environment of the detector. And they're all described by quantum mechanics. And so we're going to have some initial state where we might have a superposition of states uh, where lambda i are the basis elements for some observable that we're going to be measuring. And then we'll assume that there's some detector system and that that is some in some initial state. And then there's also some environment of the detector system and that is also in some initial state. And it's probably a uh, simplification to assume that this initial state is a product state, but, uh, but that will be fine for our purposes. Okay, so this is, this is the system. This is the state of the measuring apparatus. And this is the state of the environment. Okay, and so what happens in a measurement is that the measuring device interacts with the system, the quantum system that we're measuring in some way. And as a result of that interaction, what happens is that the state of the quantum system that we're measuring becomes entangled with the state of the measuring device. And so in this case, I've drawn a measuring device that has a couple of possible states, the, the up state and the down state, and there might be some physical arrow that points to up uh, if the measuring device reads up 
and down if the measuring device um, reads down. And so this initial measurement process is going to be some evolution of the full system where we start with this initial state, but then where after a while the first two parts of the system become entangled. Okay, and again, I'm, I'm simplifying here um, to maybe assume that the system, the measuring device and the um, spin is not very strongly coupled to the environment. And maybe this measuring process happens quickly. And so just over short time scales, what happens is that the subsystem that we're measuring and the measuring device uh, become entangled with each other. And so you see that uh, instead of a superposition where the spin is up uh, plus down, now we have a superposition where the spin is up and the measuring device reads up. And then another component of the superposition the spin is down and the measuring device reads down. Okay, and so so the the spin state and the state of the measuring device um, become correlated in this first process. And I want to emphasize that this is something that should be described quantum mechanically if we apply quantum mechanics to the whole system. And so there's just some unitary evolution using the Schrodinger equation that causes us to go from that first state where nothing is entangled to the second state where the system is um, entangled with the measuring apparatus. Okay, um, so so far there's there's nothing about probabilities or ensembles but now we can imagine that this entire system uh, it continues evolving and interacting with the environment. So there's some further unitary evolution. Okay. And eventually we expect that the system and the measuring apparatus are going to be entangled with the environment. Oops. And so Let's call that final state psi system measuring device environment um, okay and now everything is entangled And the idea here is that, well, what if we just ask about the system and the measuring device? So, so we normally don't really care about the environment, um, but the idea is that, you know, because we now have this entanglement between the system and the measuring device with the environment, and that's just generally going to happen. Almost all states have that property. What we should expect is that the system and the measuring apparatus If we just consider that as a subsystem of the full system, well then what we expect is that that is going to be generally in an ensemble. Okay. And if we have, and I guess one of the, one of the properties of a measuring apparatus, um, a, a useful measuring apparatus is that through this unitary evolution where we end up in this big entangled state of everything, um, the state of the system and measuring apparatus uh, is going to be described by an ensemble which has as its states with the particular probabilities um, these specific outcome states and so so the final description of the system and measuring apparatus will be that it's in the state up with the measuring device pointing to up with some probability given by the initial, um, the initial, the square of this initial coefficient in the superposition. Um, and, and then it'll be in, you know, the state down with the measuring apparatus pointing to down um, with some other probability, which in our example would be one half. Okay. 
And and so what we see is that, you know, this is not um, we haven't had any any particular uh, thing that happened at some specific time that we would call wave function collapse. We've just had the ordinary quantum evolution of the whole system by the Schrodinger equation. And it's very natural that in the end, all of the parts of the system are entangled. And we've understood that in that case, then the subsystem is going to be described by an ensemble. And the description of an ensemble is a collection of, of possible states of the subsystem along with a collection of probabilities. Okay, and that's the standard thing that we say happens when we do measurements in quantum mechanics. Okay. Um, and so this, this process where we end up with, where we start with a superposition state for our subsystem and for our measuring device, and then we end up with um, an ensemble as the description of our state and our measuring device. So that is the process that's known as decoherence. Okay, so this evolution from, from a quantum superposition um, to this ensemble, which is just like a more or less um, classical set of possibilities together with probabilities, um, that's the decoherence process. And so that happens through the interaction with the environment. Okay. And so that's, that's uh, all we have. So we've kind of just in summary, um, we started by understanding the mathematical description of multi-part systems um, as this tensor product between states. We understood that if you have a general state of a multi-part system, then you can't write that as, um, you, as, as a product state. You can't give a state of a, an ordinary state of one part of the system um, and it's expect that to contain all the information uh, about that subsystem in the full system, you more generally have to have um, an ensemble that describes the subsystem. And then we understood that in this context of quantum measurement, um, what we have is an evolution through the, uh, of the full, full system of quantum system measuring device and environment um, to a final state where the quantum system and the measuring device um, end up in one of these ensembles and the probabilities uh, associated with the measuring outcomes are the probabilities that uh, appear in this ensemble.